welcome to jasonnewland.com. My name is Jason Newland and this is relaxation hypnosis for stress, anxiety and panic attacks. Please only listen when you can safely close your eyes. Just want to say thank you for those of you that listen, or just to all of you that listen, actually. And if you like what I do, leave a review. I'm very pleased with myself with that little rhyme. <laughs> I've started saying it on all my podcasts. Uh, on my website, all of my stuff, apart from a couple of hundred recordings that I'm still in the process of uploading are on my website so you can stream for free or you can download for free all of my recordings all of the recordings from this podcast are on the website Um, as well as being on all the different podcast hosts as well and if for any reason you're you, you know you want to find out where the podcast is like on Spotify or anything like that there's a link as well so my podcasts my recordings have a link to where they are online so for example you know for iTunes Podcast uh, Podomat I don't know wherever Stitcher Castbox things like that I'm not sure if that actually made sense but it made sense in my head as I was saying it or before I started saying it and then when I said it out loud I'm not sure if it really came across as sensical so only listen when you can safely close your eyes what I thought we'd do today is something a little bit different from normal everything's a little bit different from normal really isn't it I suppose but I thought it would be quite nice to get in touch with that part inside of our mind that is calm. So I'm purposely making this recording during the day where there is likely to be background sounds. I'm not expecting anything like loud or anything but no helicopters taken off from the garden or stuff like that. There won't, won't be any elephants running through the through my home. I hope. Or, I don't know, it'd be, it'd be interesting, wouldn't it? It'd definitely be an interesting story to tell. I have to be quite a small elephant because the doorways aren't that big. So, there's something about being able to get in touch with, or beneficial, getting in touch with that part of your mind that we all have we all have a place uh, some people could you call it a safe place where you just you know you close your eyes and regardless of what's happening you know uh, I'm sitting here in my living room on a chair the windows are open not like wide open but they're open so when anyone goes in and out of the garden gate there's a sound there's sound of traffic on the other side outside the kitchen window someone might knock on the door um Andre might decide to run around or climb up on me and you know so it's the birds in the trees there's also the physical feelings that I've got uh, my lower back is a just a little bit achy a little bit my neck the back of my neck's very achy 
uh, slept on it a bit weird a couple of days ago and it's still not really recovered yet but it's a lot better than what it was but I can notice it and it's more noticeable when I focus on it which makes sense doesn't it I guess and the back of my head is a little bit throbby which is sort of I would put down to the lower neck the lower part you know the back of the neck my right shoulder is a little bit achy I'm basically falling apart <laughs> it sounds, I, I need to be uh, I need to be replaced with a new body I think but I'm noticing these things but I'm not moaning about them I'm not feeling sorry for myself and it's okay to feel sorry for yourself I'm not judging sometimes my I love to feel sorry for myself but it is of no use <laughs> it's really it, it can I think it can have a little bit of a a therapeutic benefit sometimes I think a little bit of self-indulgence a little bit of uh, worries me uh, every now and then perhaps but not on a regular basis and I think if we sort of keep track of the reality that um it's not useful necessarily but I still you know I still go there sometimes so you know none of us are perfect and you know what I don't want to be perfect I'm quite happy having flaws and trying to change things maybe improve some things accept other things So as I'm mentioning how I'm feeling, because you might be thinking, well, why are you telling me how you're feeling? What's that got to do with me? How are you feeling? This is an invitation from me to you to get in touch with how you're feeling. That's kind of the point of why I was telling you how I'm feeling. How do you feel right now? How does your body feel? Because you know, people that have got chronic pain, I've got, I've got a bit of chronic pain, but it's not anything serious. Um, but I know that people that have got chronic pain it can affect them emotionally why of course it does I mean it's standard isn't it it's emotional pain and physical pain causes emotional pain you just however sometimes when you actually just sit with it acknowledge it but don't try and push it away which is the natural thing that we do uh, it's the most natural thing in the world to want to push the pain away and to keep it as far away as possible also with emotional pain as well it's just natural and it makes sense to do that I mean you can't argue with it really well who wants to feel pain nobody does really do they apart from you know when you're feeling sorry for yourself and it's almost like you invite the pain in don't you when you do that when you want it to be a victim for a little bit I just want to sort of spend a couple of hours feeling like the whole world's against me and it's, you know, I kind of almost invite the suffering, <laughs> invite the suffering and it's funny. The idea of it is funny, but it's true. It's ridiculous, but it's true. 
That is what I sometimes do. And part of that might be because I do want to feel it. Because maybe I've spent so much time trying to push it away. Maybe sometimes I want to just feel it. However, if you just allow the feelings to be there, you neither push away or really feel it either. Because once you start pushing, you once you stop pushing something away, it no longer has the pressure. That it has, you know, but it might have felt really tense, really like it was trying to sort of break through the door, you know, this uh, uncomfortable feeling. Once you take the door off the hinges and leave that doorway open, what can it really do? It just flows, it just turns into a flow and sometimes, for example, my lower back will ache, other times I'm not even thinking about it or I'm not even noticing it. And this recording isn't about chronic pain. It's kind of, I suppose, using it as an example because first of all, chronic pain, a lot of people with uh, stress, depression, uh, or I suppose turn it around the other way, a lot of people with chronic pain have got extreme stress and depression due to the pain. And anxiety, perhaps about what they're capable of doing, worrying about um, what their body will do in certain circumstances. So, you know, if I was asked to help to move, uh, you know, if I had a, a family member that said, can you help me move, I'm moving house on Friday, can you help me? And I'd want to help. But, I would perhaps, well, I'd definitely start thinking about my back. What if my back doesn't hold up to it? Um, so I'm strong enough to do stuff, but it, it hurts. And it really hurts afterwards. So I can lift a washing machine with help from someone else. I can't do it on my own, but I can lift a washing machine, which is really heavy. But then I'm, I end up maybe having to sort of lay down for an hour afterwards because of the the pain on my back so knowing that there's a possibility of that I might start getting anxious and worrying and the likelihood is that's gonna get my brain focusing on my lower back to an extent where I'm probably gonna be suffering long before I even get to the house to help my family member move. Which brings me back to this brings me back to this safe place which we all have. I believe that everybody's got a place in their mind. It doesn't have to be like a a lovely decorated room with you know it doesn't have to be a visual place doesn't have to uh, have a doorway that you open and you go in and you see things. It can 
but it doesn't have to. For me, it's more about the feeling. Because that's what it ultimately ends up as anyway. You see something that leads to a feeling. You smell something that leads to a feeling. You hear something that leads to a feeling. You touch something that results in a feeling, like an emotional feeling. So this is kind of going straight to the feeling, all about all the other stuff. So no bodily functions required for this. No senses required for this. And it's a case of just going inside and instead of searching for a doorway or searching for something that I mean you think how big our brains are and how big our minds are all those billions of connections and stuff well, how am I supposed to find this little room it's not like that it's just a feeling the feeling leads you there and that feeling is I guess it's going to be different for everybody but I can explain the feeling my feeling to you that I have when I'm in that space inside my mind and I'm still aware of what's going on outside it's I suppose it's in some ways it's kind of trancey kind of hypnotic in a sense of focus but the fact that I can still talk to you and explain what's going on um, which I, if I got more involved and more uh, so the more connected I got to that feeling the less I would want to talk then that would be no good for an, for an audio recording would it so I will continue to talk so it's, I suppose it's kind of a meditative situation as well so at the moment I'm noticing I've got the breeze coming in through the window the window's open just a crack you know it's just open a little bit there's a little bit of breeze coming in the sun shining on my face, which is pretty amazing considering it's January. That doesn't normally happen at two o'clock in January. So uh, it's quite nice, I like that. I'm feeling fairly comfortable sitting in a chair. Maybe you'd like to join me, maybe, you know, if you haven't got yourself comfortable yet, maybe press the pause button and get yourself comfortable in a chair. Or if you want to lay down on a bed or lay up in a bed, whatever, just get yourself comfortable. Maybe you want to sit outside if it's a nice day. Because, you know, you may be listening to this in another part of the world where it's really sunny and warm and lovely or you might be somewhere where it's cold and snowy and lovely so just do what you want to do so I can hear the helicopter going over I told you I have helicopters in the garden, didn't I? You didn't believe me. <laughs> Actually, I think that's a plane. But we do have helicopters going over. And... I'm a very auditory person, in a sense of... I 
I find sounds, I notice sounds, and I'm just more affected by it. I can kind of hear everything that's going around, around me, just at a distance, not paying too much attention, although when I mention it, I kind of become more focused on it. Just like when I talk about how my body feels in the chair, being supported by the chair, I focus on my body. My arms are resting on the armrests of the chair. My feet are on the floor. My hands feel very relaxed. They're very loose, they're just limp. And when I focus on my hands and how loose and I suppose floppy you could call them although I'm not moving them but that sense of relaxation that my hands have automatically embraced is spreading through my body I can just feel a calmness in my body Maybe you could notice that too. So I'm now noticing my stomach. And if you could see me, you'd probably say, well, how could you not notice your big tubby stomach? But that's not the point. The point is, I can just notice it feels relaxed. And even though I can, the more my body relaxes, I can feel my lower back a little bit more. Because it's starting to stand out a little bit compared to the rest of my body and my right shoulder a little bit just a tiny little bit and the back of my neck but the reality is that the back of my neck is way more relaxed than it was before my lower back is almost it's got that feeling of not itchiness but that sense of you know when the part of your body is healing maybe there's a little bit of extra blood flow going there to clean out that area and to send those um, healing particles or whatever's required for healing to that part of your body Actually, my lower back feels fairly comfortable, and my back of my neck is very relaxed now. So, as you go inside, go inside your mind. And you realise that actually you're already there. You're almost kind of already in that safe space. The place where you can take a break from everything. The place where you can actually enjoy 
being you without any effort or thinking it's almost uh, like a neutral place where you don't need to think about anything don't need to plan there is no future there is no past there isn't even a present it's just a space that you're in it's almost like you're just energy and you can hear the sounds of the earth which is the sounds around maybe the cars maybe planes maybe people walking past the house becomes the sounds of the planet almost like the earth breathing is that sound that you hear this planet that supports you and supports everybody else but right now it's almost like you're not on this planet you're inside your own planet you're just in that safe space where nothing matters where every part of your body feels absolutely fine and relaxed now when you're in that space that safe space you really do feel safe that real sense of It's almost like that space is breathing for you. Like your brain is the universe and you've you've reached the center of that universe with that safe space. Where you don't need to do anything. There's nothing required for you to say, do, think or feel. It's almost, almost blissful in a sense that nobody wants anything from you. including yourself you're not demanding yourself to do anything or to think anything when you're in this safe space you're not trying to fit in with other people's expectations you're not trying to please anybody In this safe space, there are no regrets. There are no plans. No past, no future, no now. Time doesn't exist in this space.
this safe space is yours to visit whenever you choose to get away from everything and because time doesn't exist inside that same space you can choose to sit down in the future and just go to that safe space for a minute and I can feel like you've been there for a whole day a whole day of relaxation releasing worries and stresses from your body and from your mind so that your body feels so refreshed and relaxed and every time you go to that safe space your body knows that it's time to heal it's time to relax it's time for you to let go So if you choose, you can stay in that safe space for as long as you want to because you're in control of what you do next. You're the boss of you. And I'm going to leave you. And I'm going to see you again, speak to you again very soon. Whenever you're ready to leave that safe space inside your mind, you can just open your eyes, knowing that the feelings that you had, the feelings that you have when you're there in that safe space can stay with you. and actually have a very positive effect on the rest of your day. So thank you for listening. Remember to be kind to yourself because you deserve to be happy. You really do. Lots of love.